Hey everybody, welcome to Como Comic Books first live stream of 2021. In this live stream, I'm going to be breaking down some of the crazy stuff that's been going on in the comic market the last couple weeks, specifically in regard to collectible cards, non-sporting cards. Uh, Marvel Universe cards are going absolutely crazy right now, and that is causing some things to happen in the comic back issue market that don't make a lot of sense to me, but hey, I don't control the market. I'm just here to let you know what's going on. So first off, if this is your first time joining us, if you've never seen one of my videos before, my name is Drew and I am the owner of Como Comic Books. We're a Columbia, Missouri based comic book vendor and on our YouTube channel, our goal is to bring you the best tips and tricks that will help you take your comic collection to the next level. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Three weeks ago, four weeks ago, non-sporting cards like Marvel Universe, Spider-Man, X-Men, all of the variety of cards that came out in the early 90s were absolutely useless. I personally have literally turned down dealers, vendors, previous collectors offers of giving me sets of these cards because I couldn't do anything with them. They were absolutely worthless, which is just crazy to think about. Now, all of a sudden they are blowing up and I don't know where this is going to go, but some of the sales that have already happened are just mind boggling. So if you guys haven't already checked this out, hop over to eBay and check out some of these sales. Some of the listings are just crazy, um, but you know, the market does what the market does. Wanna give a quick uh, shout out. I see some people here in the comments, got JR with CBT says hello. So hi JR, how are you doing? It's good to see you in the chat. Um, if you are watching, go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. As I said, I'm here in Columbia, Missouri. It's really, really cold and wintry out there right now. So I am happy to be holed up here in the basement talking about some sporting or non-sporting goods cards, some comic books with you guys here on a Sunday night. So let's dive into the content. First off, um, let's just talk about what some of these Marvel cards are. If you're not familiar, Marvel Universe cards, there were four series. They were put out from 1990 to 1994. You have series one through five. The main emphasis in, in the market and what I see as far as what's selling right now is the first series, the 1990 series. So there were, and this is the Marvel fandom wiki says there's a hundred and uh where'd i see it here 167 different cards including some uh five holograph cards so if you follow me on instagram you've actually seen a post i put up earlier this week of some of those cards i actually have one of the holographs this is the spider-man versus the green goblin holograph if you can't really see it there as luck would have it, it is the least valuable uh, of the five. Um, but right here, you, you can see there's a Spider-Man holo. There's a Magneto holograph, which I saw a crazy sale on this one. Looks like we got a Silver Surfer, a Wolverine, and then the Spider-Man Green Goblin one I was talking about. It's, uh, it's amazing how quickly these things have gone from zero to hero. So to prove that point i'm going to dive straight in to some ebay sales so right now one of the cards that seems to be hot out of series one that's just a standard card is there was a stan lee card produced and sales on this are kind of all over the place these are sales uh this is sorted from most recent so these are sales just earlier today so you've got buy it now for under 20 there's a uh, 52 dollars 15 and they're just all over the place. Um, OBO accepted for four Stanley cards with the original price of $400. How many of you guys have these sitting in your storage rooms, your garage, your closet right now? I don't have this card. 
I've got some of them. It turns out I started collecting these later on, so I may not be able to cash in a whole lot, but I can tell you I'm sitting all right on one particular card, and that is the Series 3 Holograph, if I can get it to show up for y'all, which is a Spider-Man versus Venom Holograph. It was the only holograph put out in Series 3, so um, I lucked into that one. But the Stan Lee card does seem to be pretty popular, so if you were just a Stan Lee fan, maybe you pick some of these up on a whim um, or whatever. If you're not really attached to these things, it may be time to go ahead and get those listed and take advantage of this little fad as it's blowing up. The main thing I see that's really ticking up. I mean, here's a lot of cards, you know, that are, are running 5, 10, 40. There was a Stan Lee. There's a, a two-pack of Spider-Man, uh, regular costume, a black costume for 40 bucks. There are all sorts of different examples of cards that are worth dollars, tens of dollars, twenties of dollars. Um, so again, if you're not attached to these things, now may be the time. But what's really blowing up are these sealed packs and sealed cases. As you can see right here, these are Series 2 sealed cases. One went for $580. Bucks. That's crazy, guys. There's a Series 3 that was listed at $300. But check this out. Here's the big dog. Series 1 sealed box, $2,500 today. Sold today for $2,500 that's nuts now how this is playing in with the back issue market and i see some comments here um we'll pop in my buddy tom barker says says he's got the x-force number one with a deadpool card i don't know about winning the lottery tom but i can tell you i've got one here too i just bought this in a collection i picked up two weeks ago Check this guy out. The interest in Marvel cards is impacting the resale value or the market value of sealed X-Force number ones that have the Deadpool card in the back. It's not really impacting the other issues. Typically, Deadpool was always number one, so that was your most valuable one. Cable was number two, and the rest of the, I believe there were eight total cards in the set, were who cares you know nobody wants a shatterstar card nobody wants a team card they want that deadpool card cable maybe now this book which you can find in dollar boxes maybe 50 cent boxes in every single comic store every single comic show in the world is blowing up so there's a sale at 35 dollars here is a set uh with all the cards so okay they're saying five cards maybe it's a five card set for $27, $30 sale, $40 sale for the Deadpool card. So if you're sitting on a pile of X-Force number ones, I think I've got a dozen of them. We need to get out there and get these things listed because you got to strike while the iron's hot and this kind of crazy situation just doesn't come around every day. <laughs> Brett, Brett's got it investing like it's GameStop. I don't think we're quite that bad. I mean, if we're all already sitting on these Deadpool cards, these X-Force number ones, I think we're going to be okay. Um, we're not really going to lose anything. Um, unfortunately, if you're buying these books at 35, 40, 20, however many dollars, I would advise against that because these things are everywhere. Like I said, this copy right here, I literally bought two weeks ago. I have at least 10 or more of this in a box somewhere so please 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 get guys don't go out there on ebay right now and pick these up get out to your local comic stores get out to your next local comic show hit those back issue bins you're gonna find this book for one dollar five dollars maybe even less they are everywhere because it's one of the most overprinted books in the history of comics i promise you let's see 
All right, I can see Kurt up in here saying to check out the sales on the cable card. Okay, maybe I'm missing out. Maybe cable's taking off too. I'll have to check that out. Thanks for the heads up on that, Kurt. <laughs> and Alan, Alan says his cards are finally worth something. Um, wow, a hollow Wolverine signed by Stan. I appreciate you watching from North Dakota. I would, uh, I would maybe check and. Uh, see what it'd cost to send that to PSA to get it graded. I don't know if they do signatures or not. I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about the card grading aspect. Um, if they view a signature as like a defect or something, but regardless in the industry, like in the hobby, I would think something like that could be of interest to a, a wide variety of buyers. If that's something you want to sell, I wouldn't blame you for wanting to hold on to it. Now here's where it gets really crazy. The Deadpool card itself. Here are some examples of where just the card itself is sold for over $200. That's right. A card from the back of a dollar bin comic book is selling for $200 on occasion. These are a few days old. If you go back and sort by date, they're not quite as impressive. And um, I'm not getting that figured out. So I just sorted by high price. But yeah, you just look at some of these graded examples that are crazy high dollars. Somebody had 18 of these cards that three days ago sold it for $600. Maybe I need to be that guy. I don't think I'll get that price. Um, now they seem to be selling more in the area of 15 to 20. Even so. This is a card, again, that came out of the back of a $1 comic book. It's pretty nuts. Kevin says he thinks there's too many for it to stay high. I think that's right. That's why I wanted to get on here and talk about this tonight. I think this is a short-term thing. So if you are sitting on these books or these cards and aren't attached to them, need a little extra jingle in your pocket, now is the time. I think this is definitely something to act quickly on. I wouldn't wait for it to go higher if that's even a possibility. Um, another thing I want to throw out, it's not really affecting the price of graded copies of X-Force 1 because nobody gives a crap about the book. It's all about the card. So here's GPA for X-Force number one. Last sale was $69.00 hasn't been a sale um, in an upward trend really since these cards have started taking off. So it tells you it's not the book. Nobody cares about the book. It's all about the card. I'm gonna go ahead and check out some more comments here. Yeah, JR's got it right here. Turn the cards into cash or key comics. That's what it's all about. A big part of this hobby is taking something you don't really necessarily like or care about anymore and turning it into something you do care about. As I mentioned, there were five series of these cards. This is all series one. In my opinion, they started out kind of blah um, and got better over time. The series five was pretty fancy. Um, there's the holograph I was talking about. Personally, when I got into these things, it was later on. And in 95, you had things like the Fleer Ultra X-Men set. There was a Fleer Ultra Spider-Man set. I actually have some promo inserts that used to come out. Um, I can't remember if they came into uh, like Wizard or where these things would come out, uh, out in. But I've always held on to these when I find them in collections. Just because I'm not crazy about the cards, but... The artwork is really, really nice on a lot of these, and I appreciate them for what they are in that respect. So, if uh, this is not your thing, I totally get that. It's just something to be aware of right now, and take advantage of it, you know. Prices are getting crazy on comics, and it's great to be able to take advantage of something you have that you don't care about that you might have to dig out of your garage or out of storage and turn it into something you do care about. Um, 
I don't know how often you guys check out the background in my uh, regular videos when I'm in the comic room, but I have a green goblin cube. So I've always had these guys just kind of hanging around behind me in my videos. I actually found another one um, in my old cards that I'm going to put back in my background. Uh, so you'll see that in future videos. So again, not something I really am too excited about, too interested in, but I wanted to hop on and give you guys a quick heads up about some of this stuff. If you haven't seen uh, what's been going on, if nothing else for entertainment purposes, it's worth checking out. Popping back to the comments. Let's see here. Brett says, PSA is a lot more strict than CGC, but uh, we'll give the occasional 10. And that really is where the money is for the most part. It's going to be in the PSA 8s, 9s, and 10s. If anything, here's what I would say is probably the most likely scenario. These things have been worthless without value for the better part of 20, 25 years. As such, in that time, third grading or third party grading has come along. Nobody graded these things because nobody wanted them. So there's very, very limited population of all of these cards on the census, particularly in the super high grade, eight, nines, tens. So near mint, mint, gym mint, however that breaks down. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so what I foresee happening is now all of a sudden, Yu-Gi-Oh got hot, right? Or not Yu-Gi-Oh, but uh, Pokemon got hot. I agree with Tom. Fleer Ultra artwork was always the best. So Pokemon got hot. Sports cards are coming back. This is just people trying to get ahead of the next big thing so they don't get caught behind like they did with Pokemon with sporting goods cards, or sporting goods, sporting cards. So baseball, basketball, that kind of stuff. Uh, sports ball exciting stuff i know so now in my view it's just people trying to play catch up with that but where the money is going to be made at is on those super high grade cards that get submitted now and the people who get their eights nines and tens back before everybody else subs gets them back floods the market and the price bottoms out again i don't know that's just my gut feeling of what is going to happen so if you have the cards you're not interested in them you want to roll the dice on a little bit of grading um, do yourself a favor a favor rather familiarize yourself with how strict card grading is um, centering i know is a big thing it appears from what i've learned in recent days that card grading as strict as we feel like CGC and CBCS can be when it comes to grading comic books, it sounds like card grading is a whole nother level of unforgiving. So familiarize yourself with that. If you have some cards you think would be contenders for eights, nines, or tens, specifically nines and tens, roll the dice. You never know. Um, as I've showed you some of the sales on that Deadpool card, I'll pull that back up. So, you know, a, a 9 Deadpool card sold for somewhere around 300 best offer there. Then you get into the, the really highs. You get the 9s, the 10s. I'd like to know what this guy actually took for this 10. That could be interesting. But the money is going to be in the PSA 10s, the PSA 9s. If this is purely a flip, I would stick with PSA. I know they're a little slow right now. I've heard months um, over some of the other companies. But, you know, as with anything, if you can get your cards back faster than everybody else, even if maybe the grading company you go with doesn't pay out as much as a PSA would, if you're first to the market, you're still going to probably be pretty well positioned. I'm going to head back to the comments. Alan says, he says they're everywhere, going to be short-lived. Uh, time, <laughs> yeah, definitely time to move uh, a trunk load. I, I'm sorry for you because I'm sure you've moved a few times since uh, the mid-90s, so I'm sure you've uh, put in a lot of effort moving those over the years. So, yeah, definitely, Alan, now is the time to cash in. Captain Crunch says, hey, 
hey how's it going um, he loves the videos and wants me to keep up the good work so i appreciate that um, glad you all are enjoying the content live streams are a little different i hope you're enjoying getting to hang out a little bit here tonight um, i am going to keep it fairly short i know reggie's going to go live at 9 30 and i want to be over there for that um, if you're going to be over at Reggie's live stream here in the next 10 minutes or so, drop me a comment and let me know. Maybe I'll see you over there in uh, the chat on Reggie's video. All right. Asking ye shall receive. D. Lopra says the guy took 4K for that PSA Deadpool card. 4K for a Deadpool card that came out of a dollar bin comic book. So again, if you've got a pile of these, some of them are super great, you don't mind taking the chance on subbing some to be graded, that's a pretty nice comic book. Tom, how nice of a, a Werewolf by Night 32 would that get you? Pretty nice one, I think. Um, so that's the way I see this plan. As we've talked about in the comments, I think it's going to be a, a bubble, a very short-lived bubble. So... Get out there, get your card subbed if that's what you want to do. Well, maybe first you ought to find them, okay? Dig in the garage. I had to go in the storage room here at the house the other day to find mine. Turns out I don't have much. Um, oh, well. But, um, you know, don't delay. Get out there, get these things submitted, get them listed as soon as you can because I think we're going to be talking about how crazy it was the first part of 2021 when people were spending all the money they had on non-sports cards things that nobody's cared about for 25 years and i hope we're all doing that at a comic book convention safely you know because god i miss comic book conventions i'm sure you guys too do as well and i hope to see you all out at a show sometime we're starting to get a few dates um, our big show of the year is always Planet Comic Con in Kansas City. So if you're looking to travel sometime for a show, you will definitely find us there. Uh, we're usually running around having a blast. And anyway, I'm going to go ahead and land the plane on this now and, and tell everybody have a great night. Enjoy the rest of your Valentine's Day. And thanks for joining us this is our first live stream and if you remember on our channel update video i said i want to try and do one of these at least once some once a month so hopefully i will be able to uh come up with some good topics to do so this one just seemed too great um whether or not the wtf comic news will be an ongoing feature or not i don't really know but if 2020 taught me anything it's that i don't know what's going to happen any given day any given moment in this market just things are crazy so if that holds true we're going to be back for wtf comic news more and more often so everybody have a great night take care keep an eye out we'll have another video coming out this week and we will see you all in the next video